concealed by a field with mingled seed, neither shall a garment mingled of linen and woolen come upon thee. And very briefly, I just want to talk about the danger of the mingled seed, because if you look at the middle of the verse there, it says, Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed. Now, I don't know, who's ever heard this verse sort of used to try to make fun of the Bible? Yeah, they'll be like, oh, well, of course, you can't, you know, the Bible says you can't wear wool and linen together, you know. And someone tried to make fun of this in front of my face. They said that that's as dumb as saying you can't eat the plastic fork off of a paper plate or something like that. They just, but, you know, when people mock the Bible, don't be surprised, because the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, right. they are foolishness unto him. Right. Neither can he know them, for they are spiritually discerned. That's you right. the Holy Spirit living inside of you to understand the Bible. Right. So don't be surprised when someone who doesn't have the Holy Spirit, you know, makes fun of a deep teaching like this. Now, just very quickly, what I want to point out is what the mingled seed the mingled garment and the diverse cattle, it's all one image. It's all the same doctrine, just expressed in three different ways. And if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 22, it actually expresses the same doctrine. <laughs> it's worded slightly differently. It actually goes in more detail. But it says, it says, you shall keep my statutes, thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. That's the first image of this same doctrine. The second image, thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed. And the third image, it says, neither shall thy garment, neither. The fact that it says neither there, that's a conjunction. Just like you wouldn't do this, you wouldn't do that. So it's all still the same teaching. Third Amen. image, neither shall a garment mingled of, of linen and woolen come upon thee. Now, in order to understand this, obviously we have to compare spiritual with spiritual. Fortunately for us, there are times in the Bible in the New Testament that bring up this doctrine again. It brings up in the New Testament the idea of the mingled seed in Matthew chapter 13. If you go to Matthew chapter 13, how am I on time so far? You're fine, brother. Okay. So, notice that the middle of the, the verse, it talked about the mingled seed. Well, in Matthew chapter 13, if we start in verse 24, it talks about the seed. It says, Another parable he put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares sure among the feet sure and went his way. So that's another seed being mingled with the seed that was sown. That's mingled seed. Same doctrine just expressed in the New Testament. Amen. And, and then if you go forward, just, just for sake of time, it says, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares. So when did the enemy come and sow tares? While men slept. You know, so that ought to be a warning about being watchful. You know, in these churches. Because a church like this, don't let it die. You know, be very watchful. You know, those of you that are a member of this church, don't let the enemy sow the tear here because this is a church of the good seed of, 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 of God. Now just going by just very quickly, the enemy sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. And so let's just skip down for sake of time. Let's go down to where Jesus explains this parable. It says right here uh, in verse 38, Jesus is answering. He's explaining what this parable is. He says, the field is the word, the good seed are the children of the kingdom. And then he goes on to say that the tares are the children of the wicked one. So, the, so you, have, you have people who are children of the kingdom. That there's those who received him. To them gave you the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name. Those are the good seed. If you're here and you're a believer tonight, I got news for you. You're the good seed. Amen. But then you also have the ones that are the seed of the devil, because Jesus said in John 8:44, "Ye are of your father, the devil." Right. So you have those that believe on Jesus; they are the seed of God, and those that hate Jesus, who have thoroughly rejected Him in their heart, and so He has rejected them in return, like what Romans 1 teaches. Amen. Those are the seed of the devil. And then in between, you have the people who we have to reach, who we just reached today and got saved. Right. So you have the seed, the, the children of men, you have the seed of God, and then you have the seed of the devil. And there is a danger in mingling those seeds. Now, I don't have a lot of time to get into all of this, but I'll just, just let you just three areas in which it will ruin your life. Number one, if you mingle the seed, if you mingle God's seed trying to mingle with the devil's seed, you will ruin your relationship with God. Now, thank God you can never lose your salvation. Amen. Amen. Thank yes, God amen. you have given to them eternal life. Amen. They shall never perish. Amen. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Amen. But guess right. what? Our God's also a consuming fire. Yeah. And he yeah. will also right. chasten, every, chasten those whom he loveth and scourge every son whom he receiveth. Yeah. So right. if we try to be friends with those who hate God, we may yeah. affect our relationship with God here on this earth. We'll still go to heaven. We just may not make it there in one piece. That's why, if you notice, there's a godly king. He was the child of God. He was a saved man, King Jehoshaphat. When he tried to join up with the seed of the wicked one, which was Ahab, Jehu, son of Hanani, one of my favorite preachers in the Bible, walked up to him and said, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon
upon thee from before the Lord. And so if we try to love those who hate God, we might incur God's wrath upon us in our lives. Right. Now, the, now, I had more that I wanted to explain there. I think people will try to say, oh, well, love thy neighbor as thyself. That means you're supposed to love everyone, right? That means everybody's your friend, you know, Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, Barney and friends, <laughs> Sesame Street. But, but if you go back to Leviticus 19 where we started, fortunately the Bible also gives us that doctrine also. Very, the verse right before it, we started at Leviticus 19.19, 19, go back up to Leviticus 19.18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, I am the Lord. So if you look at that verse, the children of thy people is used interchangeably with love thy neighbor as thyself, which is with, with thy neighbor, which is actually where that verse comes from. So, the children of thy people is used interchangeably with the phrase thy neighbor. Now, if you're a child of God and they're a child of, and they're the child of Satan, is that the children of thy people? No, no. no. So is the children of the devil are the children of the devil your neighbor? No, no they're they not. are not. They are not. So people like to show, oh, Jesus said, love thy neighbor as thyself. Yes, but Jesus believed in Leviticus. Jesus believed yeah, in Deuteronomy. Right. Believed Jesus in believed in all of it. Jesus, Amen. Jesus, Jesus is the same God. Jesus himself came down and sent those angels to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. So people say, well, what would Jesus do? Jesus sent the angels yeah, to destroy, to, to get Lot out, and to Jesus then rained fire and brimstone on Sodom yeah. and Gomorrah. Yeah. So, so this whole idea of, you know, well, Jesus just loved everybody. What did Jesus do? You know, well... Jesus set two cities on fire for hating God and being a bunch of reprobate Amen. homos. So, I mean, right. that's exactly yeah. what Jesus right. would do. And yeah. so Amen. there you have it. So that's the first area. We can ruin our relationship here on this earth with God. The second area that's parable is it's a, that it's a peril, a danger of the mingled seed, is we can ruin our children's lives. I don't have time to really get into the details, but if you read Genesis chapter 13, it says that Lot pinched, he, he pitched his tent towards Sodom. Mm -hmm. And then in 2 Peter 2, it says that Lot, who had a righteous soul, he was vexed day to day seeing and hearing the, the unlawful deeds that they did. So he, he pitched his tent towards Sodom. So when he and his kids woke up and got out every morning, what did they see? Sodom, exactly. Mm -hmm. And now I don't know if people notice this, the Sodomites were some filthy animals. They did their deeds outside. Because who remembers the story where Lot invites the angels to his home and then the men of Sodom surround it? What do those men of Sodom say, say to Lot? Out. Bring, Bring them out. out. Bring them out yeah. that we may know them. Not let's yeah. go in to know them, which would be yeah. bad enough. Bring yeah. them out. Yeah. So they, they were outside doing that. So Lot had a righteous soul. Obviously, you know, he may have been a little bit stronger <laughs> to resist some of those temptations, but not as true. <coughs> because his daughters ended up getting him drunk and, and sexually violating him. Yeah. Later on, if you read Genesis chapters 19 and 20. And so you may think that, oh, well, I'm an adult. You know, I know what the Word of God says. You know, I, 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 you know I'm strong against this. I can watch this filthy thing on television. Yeah, but your children aren't as strong as you. Right. Yeah, and right. they might actually get influenced by that thing. Yeah, so don't right. make the mistake Lot did of pitching your tent towards Sodom, mingling you, the godly seed, with, with the devil's seed. Don't make that mistake because you might ruin your children. And the third area is it might physically incur God's wrath upon our lives. Now, I don't really have time to get into this, but go to, uh, go to 1 Corinthians. Go to the book of 1 Corinthians, and then I'm, I'm almost done here, I promise. First Corinthians 10.10. 10. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were what? Destroyed of the destroyer. Now, actually, let's go back to verse 9 also. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Now, why would Paul be warning a church about a time where God killed people? Because God will physically end the life of a believer who mingles with the devil's seed and gets out of his will. Now, you won't lose your eternal life. But there have been people in the Bible who they got out of God's will and their life physically ended prematurely right. as a result of it. Take Saul, for example. That's right. Take Samson, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Take these people that 1 Corinthians 10 is mentioning that happened all the way back in the book of Numbers. So, because why? Because God has a two, he has, he has the sword of his mouth. Right. God is not just sunshine and rainbows. And if you mingle with God's seed, not only can you endanger your relationship with him, you can endanger your children's spiritual lives, and you could also end your physical life prematurely. So I just want to end on this note. The Bible says, touch not the unclean thing, Amen. and I shall Amen. receive you. Amen. Now, when the Bible says that, who, you, uh, there are a lot of children in here, so I assume that you guys all you guys all changed diapers, or maybe a lot of you have changed diapers before. When are you more likely to want to hold and receive your child? 
right before, right after they've you know just totally blown out their diaper and they're just filthy, or right after they just got out of a bath and they're just all nice and fresh. When are you more likely to want to hold your child? You're more, you're more likely to want to hold them when they're clean, right? You know, you know, because I, you know, I have a two-year-old and one on the way, praise God. And basically, Amen. touch not the unclean thing, and I shall receive. God is more likely to want to touch us and want something to do with us when we're not touching the unclean thing. So, blesses the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Right. nor standeth Amen. in the way of sinners, right. yep. nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, yep. but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Right. You, have, you have two choices, either the counsel of the ungodly or delight in the law of the Lord. You can't have them both at the right. same time. Amen. 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 Good preaching. All right.